Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome to another episode of SSRT. Finally, this will be the last one because I've completed everything that I need for the ground crew and stuff of this nature. And then I'll probably go ahead and stream it this Saturday and uh, we'll see how many modules we can get up into space before time runs out. Now right here I was trying to Someone said you could, you could control the um, you can control the speed of the cargo cargo ramps through the track editor the Cal 1000. Uh, I maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I couldn't figure it out to save my life. So I just ended up just trying to use a combination of gears and cargo ramps in order to give it a somewhat cushiony ride as the entire thing is lifted up vertically. Next thing I did was I changed it a little bit, tried to save part count, but also make it a little smaller, more compact, more robust, and uh, ended up finding out that I didn't need all of that extra weight on top, that it worked just fine the way it was <clears throat> without all that extra weight. Next I thought, well, if I can't use the Cal 1000, maybe I can use robotic parts again. I fail to remember just how weak these damn parts are when it comes to some serious tonnage. <laughs> so yeah, the, I, I don't even, it just, it just squishes them into place. They're shaking because they're not even all the way in yet. Right here I'm kind of rebuilding the, the loading vehicle. Uh, making it so that it can go over bumps a lot easier, go over ramps and ridges and stuff a lot easier because to be honest, even though it looked cool to have those um, kind of slanted pieces, well they're ramps, but slanted pieces out there like that in the long run, it, it really kept it from being able to get on and off of the runway, which sucked. So. I went for a more practical design. Here we are testing it out real quick. It's got a nice big NASA logo on the side. Kind of reminds me of some sort of creature or long necked dinosaur. The next vehicle that I wanted to build was some sort of refueler. And my first idea was to make a, was to make a vehicle that could be thrown away afterwards in order to save part count. So instead of having just this huge field of tanks, or tanks as in fuel tanks, instead of having this huge field of fuel tanks and then having one vehicle go back and forth from it, I was thinking, well, why not just have the fuel tanks be able to drive themselves and we can get rid of the fuel uh, truck altogether. This didn't really turn out to be a great idea because in the end, the park count would just go through the frickin' roof as I started learning just how many of these I would actually need in order to launch at least six parts into space to build a space station. I inevitably had just scrubbed it. So in scrubbing the whole fuel tank and drive itself idea, I went back to the old idea of just having a dedicated fuel truck so instead of having a fuel truck that had to make 50 trips in order to fuel the thing up, I wanted a truck that could fuel it up one go. So it really, it's it's more like just basically a fuel vehicle, not necessarily a truck because technically the sheer weight and size of this thing, you really couldn't call it a truck. And there's <laughs> It would be considered more like a mobile fuel platform um super sized so that came with its own slew of problems as the largest wheels in the game like to pop under extreme weight which i never really understood how the runway gears can hold extreme weight just fine but the largest freaking wheels in the game are made out of tin foil. Inevitably I found out how to make a good design that consisted of both 
the landing gears, large landing gears, next to the large wheels so that I could not only be able to put most of the weight on the landing gears, but have some form of drivability using the larger wheels. Now, even though I've done this before, combining um, landing gears with wheels in order to put most of the weight on the landing gears, um, it still needed some ironing out. There was plenty of plenty of design flaws that uh, <laughs> are like right here. <laughs> yeah, plenty of design flaws that needed ironing out. One of the ideas that I had was to actually make the landing gears have no traction whatsoever. And of course that just put the whole freaking thing on ice. And it was, it was kind of fun to play with at, at the time, but uh, eventually I figured out a good combination and finally it works as long as you drive well below the speed limit. So in, in testing I actually found out that the the grip pads that I was going to use to be placed underneath of the craft or the SSRT was uh, glitching out somehow. They were shaking the entire thing. It it kind of gave put me on edge because I'm figuring if they're bugging out with the vehicle's empty weight on top of it, I can only imagine what a fully fueled and loaded craft would do to these things. They they would probably destroy the entire craft or be on the verge of destroying it. So I switched it out for something a little bit more hardier. It's not as pretty, but it will work. The next idea I came across was instead of having these metal metal girders being forced underneath the belly of the craft, because every time they did that in my mind I could just hear the just the screeching of metal and paint being removed as this thing came underneath and scraped along the hull in order to pick up the entire craft. So I figured, well, why not we have like a roll, rolly system, like a like bunch of wheels, right? Makes sense, right? In reality, that would make perfect sense. In KSP, however, um, you have to remember this game is extraordinarily buggy uh, on the best of days, such as the grass being as slick as ice for some messed up reason. Uh, so when I initiated it for testing these wheels unfortunately they have that spring bug inside of them some sort of spring system and when it just touched the side of the spacecraft well all hell broke loose so I know that my rule is not to enter the space plane hangar or the VAB but I didn't really want to have a field of huge gas tanks just littered all over the place, sucking up part count. So the idea that I came up with was to be able to just uh, go into uh, the space center menu and uh, load up a fuel tank, a large fuel tank that will last for like three or four missions. And then when that's all used up, I can go ahead and recover it and just load up uh, another a large fuel tank without ever entering the VAB or the space plane hangar. This fuel tank would have an extension on it so that the large fuel mobile platform can hook up to it and fuel up. So uh, that was the idea and I think I'm going to stick with it because it really drastically lowers the amount of parts that would actually be needed if I was to put the entire mission fuel out on the lawn basically so yeah that's a that's where I'm going with this so now it was just a matter of designing the modules that I want for this project 
uh, to build a relatively small but decent space space station. So each module is labeled um, one's one's the space station core. Basically, it can go up there and survive by itself. After that, I would go ahead and, and design a power module, a fuel module, a little tow vehicle, an escape pod, a docking port, things of this nature. So one of the last pieces that I needed to design was some sort of warehouse, something that would hold all of the modules to be ready for collection from the loading vehicle. Now I know I said I was going to try to keep it somewhat realistic, but at this point I was way tired and uh, I was losing my patience with the buggy KSP. And so I just slapped a small uh, solid booster on there just to push it out of the way. And then once it got far enough out of the way, it would uh, plop onto the ground. But like I said, KSP is buggy, so the ground, even though even though I put freaking extreme grip pads on this thing, it was still sliding on the ground. <sighs> it, it, it is what it is, so yeah, we're just going to have to deal. But if that wasn't bad enough, when I went ahead and uh, brought the fuel vehicle over to the fuel tower and try to connect with it in order to transfer fuel back and forth suddenly more stuff started glitching out uh, the piston started going back and forth the entire fuel vehicle started to shake and bounce around luckily nothing exploded but it was definitely trying to summon the kraken with all of its all of its might and I'm just going to ignore it because, hey, nothing exploded. It still worked. Um, so, that being the case, I don't have the patience to deal with <laughs> to deal with KSP right now. And it's super buggy self. But hey, it works. We're going to go ahead and use it anyway. So, yeah. SSRT stream, live stream, uh, Saturday, the 20th Eastern Standard Time. Around 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to launch as many of these as we can within an hour or two and see if we can't build ourselves somewhat of a decent looking space, sta space station or die in the process. So if something explodes, if I lose the SSRT, then I'll be like, okay, we're, go we're gonna call it quits. But it should be fun and I hope to see you guys all there. Thank you so much for being here. I know I'm a small channel. I'm an old channel, but I'm a small channel, but the fact that you guys are still with me, it's absolutely awesome, and I, and I absolutely adore and thank all of you for staying here this long with me. All right, I'll see you on, uh, I'll see you on Saturday. Uh, everyone, I am Veos, signing off, and have a good night.